Hi guys, this is Rowan Horton here, and today I am going to do a review on one of my favorite childhood video games growing up, and this will be honored for its 20th anniversary. Hope you guys enjoyed this little 20th anniversary documentary, and I'm sure you guys will like it. I'm a, I'm, I like to play video games, and my, um, before I was introduced to Mario, I've played the Nintendo 64, and I've played video games such as Get Sent to the Gecko, Pilot Wings, and many more. But my favorite non-Mario video game has got to be Jet Force Gemini. Yep, you heard me. Jet Force Gemini, my favorite Nintendo 64 childhood game. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? Here's the game cartridge. Um. Anyway, here's a little story of how I got introduced to Jet Force Gemini. I was, in 2008, I was home from school, and I saw my sister playing the Nintendo 64, and she was playing in Mizar's Palace, and she was playing as Juno, and that was the time I first laid eyes on that game. Ah, I'll never forget the time. Anyway, um, let me tell the story about Jet Force Gemini. Jet Force Gemini is a 1999 sci-fi sh third-person shooter game, which is made developed by Rare LTD and Nintendo 64. And the story is about two teenagers, Juno and Vela, and the mascot dog, Lupus, who are the Jet Force Gemini Squadron, and they notice the attack on Goldwood, which is on... which is about bear and koala-like creatures named Tribals that are being terrorized by blue ants, which are referred as drones, by the evil tyrant Mizar. The trio had to collect, uh, save every tribal and collect every ship part before it's too late. Oh yeah, um, there's also a robot named Floyd, who was a former minion of Mizar. Sorry I had to spoil a few scenes for you guys, but I think this I think this is the best time to tell the story well the review now. So I hope you guys enjoy. The game starts in a scenery of space with asteroids floating around a planet and we pan into a ship. And we see the free, free main characters of the game, Juno, his sister Vela, and the dog Lupus, who is either their pet or the mascot. They are the three last remaining members of the squadron, Jet Force, and their last name in Jet Force is Gemini. And then they receive a distress call from a planet called Goldwood by the Tribals, which are free which are koala bear-like creatures, and they are being terrorized by drones. Now the team escapes the ship, but Juno gets pushed by an exploding door, and he gets ambushed by ants, but he tells his the rest of his teammates to go on, and they all escape. Juno arrives on Goldwood and meets up with Magnus, telling him about Vela and Lupus arriving here for a short time. Then he meets with King Jeff telling him about the invasion. Like a lightning strike, Juno fights the drones on his way to find his teammates. He meets up with Magnus again, but he tells him that Vela and Lupus are now at the SS Anubis and gives him the red key. Now Juno fights more drones on his escape and departs from Goldwood and arrives on the SS Anubis. Juno me meets up with Magnus once again and tells him that Vela has gotten kidnapped. Juno must fight for his sister against the drones and destroy every cell door panel to save the tribals and his sister. Vela is rescued and she returns to her ship while the game goes on and on and on and on. 
The three teammates meet each other again at Miser's Palace, courtesy of Vela finding Lupus at i -Corps. Then a pyramid flies down to the palace, and the three JFG members go inside it, one by one, and stand on each free pillar, getting transported somewhere. Juno returns from his transportation, then we meet Mizar. Juno tries to take down Mizar, but Mizar was too strong and wipes out Juno. When Mizar leaves, Juno wakes up and exits the pyramid with his other teammates. The trio finally face Mizar, but are shielded by blue flames. Lupus, on the other hand, flies over them and prepares to battle Mizar. The two rivals have a fight until Lupus finally takes out Mizar. However, Mizar was faking his death all the time. He flies off and hijacks an asteroid that will be heading towards Earth. King Jeff finds the trio and tells them about an ancient tribal spaceship, 12 missing ship parts, and missing tribals. He leads the trio back in the pyramid for a little makeover. King Jeff has given the team new armor, and the team exits the pyramid once again to save all the tribals and collect all ship parts. In old planets and new planets, they collect 11 ship parts and they receive the final part from King Jeff. Now the heroes finally combine the parts into the ship and they fly off to the asteroid. Juno invades the asteroid to find Mizar. He goes outside until he sees Mizar in front of him, ready for the final face-off. The two rivals fight until Juno wins, and Mizar's head comes off. When the head opens, it is revealed to be Barry, King Jeff's jealous brother. He tells him that he was behind all the atrocities, even with the dynamite in the core of the asteroid. Floyd decides to sacrifice himself by leaving the dynamite on him, much to the team's worrying. The team escapes the asteroid without Floyd, and the asteroid explodes with Floyd still inside. The three heroes all make it back to Earth, and everyone has an award ceremony. They earn their medals, much to their proudness. A while later, they have a party back at the i Big Bug Fun Club. There are four playable characters in the game. The first is Juno, the leader of the squadron. Vela, Juno's sister and the feisty one. Lupus, the mascot and possibly the pet of Juno and Vela. And finally, we have Floyd, a robot who used to work for Mizar. Each of the four characters have their own ability. Juno can walk through lava, Vela could swim underwater without drowning, Lupus can hover in the air for a short amount of time, and Floyd can participate in a challenge. Overall, I think Jet Force Gemini, although it is underrated, is one of the best Rareware games of all time. It has some cool characters, explorable planets, epic music, delightful colors, and a nice scenario. You guys should play this game if you haven't already. You're going to be shooting ants, saving bears, picking up some powerful weapons, and much more. Lots of people grew up with this game, including me. I would have to give this game a 10.1 out of 10 for giving me a great childhood. I will always have a soft off spot for Jeff's Force Gemini, and it will be with me forever. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This was my 20th anniversary review of Jet Force Gemini. Ah, when I think about this game, it brings back many childhood memories. So yeah, um, it's a pretty underrated, rare LTD game. I hope it gets a sequel sometime. Well, there's a new game which looks a bit like the Jet Force Gemini called Tamarin. It was announced in April 2019 this year, and it features the same enemies, but different protagonists. So yeah, um... I hope it gets a remake or a sequel soon. Um, do you guys think I'm like a real-life incarnation of Juno? Have a look at me. I've got the hazel eyes. Okay, maybe I not be, but I still think I am. Anyways, that was... It, ladies and gentlemen, this was my 20th anniversary review of 
Jeff Ward's Gemini, and I'll see you guys later.